Welcome back to another episode. This is Mike Perkins, one half of MVP, one half of the Things of Life podcast, one half of Mike and Vince Perkins. And for this here, I'm the whole show. Um, okay, you saw the thumbnail, you saw the title. Um, at this point, I think it's just getting ridiculous. Um, again, reiterate, you know what I'm saying? I've only been a couple places, you know, outside of the U.S. Um, so not like a, a travel, travel, travel dude, but this is getting ridiculous. Like I, I saw the, the show from, uh, Austin, uh, yesterday. And again, another really good show, just the, the information, you know what I'm saying? It seems like the more that dudes are coming out, the more that dudes are kind of, um, giving information that you kind of don't know. Um, because you don't really have a point of reference to know what you don't know, what you don't know. Um, he mentioned early in the, um, in the stream about 300, I think he said 300 jobs, 300 jobs that you can work remotely that, um, you can kind of do, you know what I'm saying? Overseas. He was talking about, you know, call center jobs and things of that nature. And, you know, again, it's not that it didn't make common sense that that would be a thing that you could do, but it's like one of those things that when you say it, it's just like, oh yeah, yeah, that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Cause call centers, India, you know, that kind of thing, you know what I mean? And, uh, he also, uh, made mention of which, you know what I'm saying? I remember, uh, obviously Ed Anderson saying, uh, the same thing they had to set up you know in um in the philippines you know for when he went you know uh overseas and uh yeah so it's always good information that you get you gotta kind of find the gems in uh in a lot of the clutter you know of you know people coming up people trying to you know you know not all the guys were doing it but you know it was a particular guy that was on there um the uh african guy a nigerian guy it, it just seemed like he was kind of trying to stunt you know what i mean nigerian from uh, the dmv but neither here nor there um the point i'm trying to get to is that it's just getting ridiculous at this point you know a lot of the pushback on black men specifically traveling overseas for what they perceive to be a better life um, you know, socially, culturally, um, relationally, re- re- relationally, uh, familiarly, um, that should just be a practice at this point. That should be the, an edict of black men completely at this point. You know what I'm saying? Just men just going where they're appreciated, not where they're tolerated should just be a flat out that should be the thing at this point, you know, and it's not saying that you even have to go overseas, you know, I'm an up north, Midwest guy, you know what I mean, maybe down south is better for me, you know, maybe the west coast is better for me, but you just go where you appreciate it, and where you're celebrated, and not where you're tolerated, and that should be just the, the, uh, black man creed at this point, because you, all of this pushback, it's always the same three or four things, is tricking, of which, Let's just address tricking, which is the dumbest thing in the world. It's like, here is Trick Fest 2022. Here is just, that's what women expect. You, you have women talking about 500,000, five, not 500,000, but $500 dates. You know what I'm saying? At the least, you got Lisa Ray saying that a dude has to pay all of her bills in order to be with her. It's like, we have 50 and, and, and 40 and 50 year old women talking about, you have to trick on me in order to be my husband, you know? And it's like tricking is the new husband. Being a trick is the new being a husband. You know what I'm saying? It's like with this, with this wad of money, I be wed. That's what it is. So the tricking argument really gets tired because it's just like, yeah, you just don't want your tricks to go away from you. And then it's just, if the dude is a trick, it just costs less to trick over there. So let's just say he is a trick it costs less to trick over there. So why wouldn't I just go over there? So that's a stupid argument. To the uh, 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 the the pedal argument, I really get tired of that because 
being a pedo is illegal everywhere. So let's just stop with that argument because most dudes are not traveling like that to be pedos. If you're a pedo, you can't even travel like that. So let's just stop. It's against the law. Let's not make that a thing. Let's stop saying that because that's just dumb. Okay, that's just the dumbest thing on the fucking world. You know what I'm saying? Another argument that people make is, is that, you know what I'm saying? You just want easier women. Well, okay, cool. Not wanting difficult women doesn't mean you want easy women in the sense of sexually. Dudes just don't want to deal with women who are difficult for the sake of being difficult because the culture is chaotic. Now, again, you may be able to find pockets of women who actually aren't as chaotic and are a little bit more traditional, you know what I'm saying, in the context of relationships. And even this, too, a lot of the women that we deal with in America and in black com- in the black culture, black community, they're not women that we're having sex with. So you can be dealing with a woman, a woman from the context of just customer service, for example. If I'm dealing with a woman who works customer service and she has a nasty attitude, I don't have to be dating her to experience her poor attitude. Women that you work with, women in your family. Most of the women that we're talking about or that we're experiencing are not women that we're having sex with. Sometimes they're just in our lives. And at a certain point, we have to make a decision on whether we're going to deal with them or not. So difficult women, defiant women, destructive women, loud women, you know what I mean? Nasty attitude women, mean women. Like it doesn't, we don't have to date them to experience them. That can be your waitress. That could be the woman you work with. It could be your mom. It could be your aunt. It could be your sister. It could be your cousin, you know, but difficult, destructive, just defiant women are not good. Dealing with a woman who is hard to be around is not a, 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 a marker of manhood. You know, you don't have to have game to turn a very disrespectful woman into a respectful one. What you do is you leave that woman alone and go on about your business. So this idea of dealing with women who are easier, not sexually, but just easier to deal with and more pleasant to be around, that should be off the table with regards to a point. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? And then it's this other argument in conjunction with that argument that dudes are just in sales and that's where they're going over there. Look, let's be real. If you don't have any social skills, you won't be able to deal with any woman. So that's really just, again, another stupid argument. You know what I'm saying? That dudes are just, that dudes, dudes of all people, dudes are using in order to shame dudes out of the position of saying, you know what, let's just go over there because the women are a little more traditional. They're under patriarchy, which is safer for women. Because honestly, if you want to be protected, you're going to need patriarchy, order, structure, discipline in order to have a patriarchy in order to be protected properly. But over here, you know what I'm saying? And especially in our culture, you don't have that. That's why the women feel so unprotected. But you ask for independence. You can't have independence and protection at the same time. You got to pick one. You got to pick one. You know what I'm saying? In sales, or you know, if you know, we're even saying in sales, most of the dudes who are promoting traveling don't look like in sales, they don't look like they're having a, a, a poor time with women. Most of them show their faces, and most of them are, look like they're having a good time. They don't look like dudes who just can't get a woman. That's a ridiculous argument, you know what I'm saying? And like, I think that what, what we're finding is that a lot of these arguments are they're falling apart very early in the game. Like, it's not even like I thought at a certain point that you would get, you know, you, you have like, even with the argument between men and women, like, I think that, it, you know, it lasted maybe like a year, you know what I'm saying, of Kevin Samuels before you could actually come to the point where you're just like, oh, well, you know, maybe this guy has a point, you know what I'm saying? You know, and I'm not talking about for dudes. I think we always knew he had a point, but it took a while for women to actually just run out of shit to say, this passport thing, they ran out of shit to say very, very quickly. Like Austin is you it's only really been on the scene at this level, probably let's say a month. It's only been less than a month, but let's say a month. He's done two smoke shows and ran out of detractors. He literally ran out of detractors. There's no guy showing up. None of the none of the Dayton coach guys, none of the Lucarios, the Mr. Nineteen Fifty, nobody. All of the guys that are dating coaches that are vehemently against 
what he's preaching and obviously there's monetary incentive to be against what he's what he's saying because realistically if you're dealing with women who are naturally i'm saying cooperative friendly feminine and fit you know and you approach them and you're a provider male and you're respectful responsible you know i'm saying protector you know provider naturally that's gonna probably work because you're dealing with women who are already in position or already have been brought up or cultured to be the thing that goes with that so you know naturally they become obsolete you know when you when you you know when you think about it you know so they have financial uh and monetary but the dudes who are not dating coaches i just wonder what y'all niggas is doing at this point like what are you doing you know some of these arguments are just like they're just you can't get women over here so you gotta go over there it's like no I get to go over there because I have the option now, you know, like the dude Rilla, you know, he said he went from making like 30,000 to 80,000 now at six, six figures. It's a big feat. Congratulations to, to Rilla as a matter of fact, but it's just like, guys don't understand. Like you have to be able to make some money to travel because your money and then your money has to travel with you. There's really, it, 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 it look, with the exception of the natural dangers of going to a whole new culture and trying to figure everything out, you know what I mean? Without, obviously that exists, you know what I'm saying? Because there's a language barrier, there's a certain cultural, you know what I'm saying, inconsistencies with regards to what you've grown up in versus what you're going to be in. You know, obviously those things, I mean, there's stupid things and stupid people everywhere, obviously, you know what I mean? But with the exception of those, doesn't sound like too much of a downside doesn't sound like too much of a downside sounds like what's happening is, is that black men have found a good deal and they're trying to get that good deal and go and execute and sign on the dotted line so that they can receive the benefits of say a good deal and that women and men are like it sounds like it's mostly men are just vehemently against it and it's just like what the fuck is you niggas problems it's just getting ridiculous at this point and like again, simultaneously with you know, um, you know, uh, uh, Austin Smoke Show, Lucario is also has a stream going. That is, you know, these, you know, these are five reasons, five ways to know you a weak dude or whatever. And it's just like, dude, like at a certain point, this shit gets tired. You know what I'm saying? This shit gets tired because he's already what what Austin is doing already just in again a month's time you know what i'm saying of doing the content that he's doing and saying the things that he's saying what he's doing already is creating a like sort of like a pipeline you know already because he's already creating a group of dudes and really talking about learning how to code learning how to develop websites learning it and then having your money travel with you and then doing the things necessary to get over there getting your passport whatever, whatever he's already creating a pipeline an underground railroad if you will you know what i'm saying you know austin hollerman you know what i'm saying you know slash harriet tubman you know what i'm saying harry tubman you know what i'm saying but it's like he's already creating a way or creating at least the the uh 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 the blueprint to actually get over there because he's having people around him that actually like have done it and obviously he's traveling as well and so it gets to a point where all of these very weak arguments are failing so early in the game and then you have you know saying of course Al Grease is you know saying frustrated too coming out and a lot of very very good things that are coming out that I, you know i'm really like i'm happy for bros i think that you know what i'm saying a lot of the bros are doing very very well in articulating you know the need for men to operate in their own best interest and if that is traveling for you to travel you know what i mean if that is you know what i'm saying whatever but we need to understand and i understand that dealing with difficult women or dealing with a, a society that's not dealing with women who are just like not culturally compatible with you is not a rite of passage for man it's just not and this whole thing ain't really about sex it's not about women it's about men operating in their own best interest from top to bottom it's not only your right it's your obligation to operate in your own best interest 
a lot of what's being said against black men is it's getting to the point like i say of just just say you don't want us to be happy just say that i would respect you more if you just said you know what nigga we don't want you to be happy and then i would deal with that but at this point it's just getting ridiculous and other black men are actually the ones saying it mostly other black men it's getting to the point of being ridiculous. Other black men are actually the ones that are saying it mostly, and it's get it's getting out of hand, you know. And it's mostly the dating coach guys or guys that kind of subscribe to the game idea. Oh, you can't get no women here, so you got to go over there. Why would I? It's like this. It's like I'm shooting on a basketball hoop that purposely got like a lid over the actual hoop, and it's just like, well, am I going to shoot on that hoop? or shoot on the one that at least doesn't have a lid over it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to, I don't want to shoot at the basket that has a lid on it. And then if I make a shot, then I'm the man. But like, why don't I just shoot on the basket that doesn't have a lid over it at least? I still got to shoot the shot. I still got to shoot a good shot. You know, because you can't go overseas and not have shit together. You know, you can't go over there and be broke. I mean, obviously that, that would be a bad deal. But why would I shoot at a basket with a lid on it? And that's what, that's what some of our women are and some of just the women in this culture american culture are it's just it's shooting at a basket with the lid over it. it's like how are you gonna make that shot you know they throw every and just the, the like marriage laws and family court laws alone make it impossible to exist here without getting fucked up you know what i mean and for the guys that do it you know hey man you know you you better than me but the marriage laws and family court laws alone, custody laws rather, alone, make it impossible for you to leave here, for you to just, unless you just don't participate at all, you know, and for the guys who have, you know, not participated, congratulations to y'all, you know, because a lot of this shit is just, it's, it's bogus, but everybody's telling you, they're gaslighting you and telling you, well, if you man enough, then you can do it. It's like, no that's not man it's not man manhood is not based on my ability to put myself through rough things you know just to prove like that's not it you know what i'm saying that's not it especially when there's no especially when there's no like what's the end result it's not like lifting weights or running or eating right you know what i'm saying you know you endure some pain with that but like people are asking you to endure pain that you just really don't have to endure like what, what's the purpose of it what's the purpose of dealing with american law when you don't have to when you can't travel what's the purpose of dealing with a woman that's gonna take your kids you know 90 percent of custody hearings are going in the favor of the women it's not going in the favor of the men the men are losing custody hearings the men are losing in divorces why would you be why would you be here if you don't have to be here and it's men who have been through these situations that are advocating for men to stay for what fucking reason at this point it's just getting ridiculous man like you all like i commend austin for for really for one showing his face you know what i'm saying and being you know on the front line you know what i mean and again not for just traveling but for black male advocacy black male advocacy do what's in your best interest do not let anybody get in the way of you operating in your best interest. And if it's in your best interest to leave, then you need to go. You need to get your passport and you need, if it's in your best interest to stay, then you do that. And this is another thing, like at the end of the day, it's all musical chairs. You know what I'm saying? It's all musical chairs. And when dudes leave, for the dudes who are saying, I can get chicks here. Look, that means more chicks for you. The more dudes leave, the more chicks for you. You know, at the end of the day, like if it's really about getting chicks and fucking these bras or whatever y'all think, then realistically, it's going to be more chicks for you. So how about you just enjoy that it's going to be more chicks for you because it's musical chairs. It ain't like, look, man, at the end of the day, it's not like the cute game where it's like it's nine chairs and it's 10 women, you know, and the chairs represent men. It's fucking 40 women and it's three chairs. And they're going around in circles and it's it's you know they, they, they're going around in circles and if you want to know how bad women are doing just look online put in go online put in a uh, 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 loan for uh, student loan forgiveness um student loan forgiveness reactions 
and you'll see a bunch of women either saying it's not enough, clapping, crying, doing whatever, because that's how well they're doing. They're looking for loan forgiveness. And I'm not mad for the women that want it, but it, it shows that you're not doing as well financially as you would say, because I'm not looking for financial. I'm not looking for, you know, I'm not looking for, you know, loan forgiveness. because I don't have any loans, but that's how well they're doing. They're looking for loan forgiveness. And it's mostly women and it's mostly black women that are going through it. Black women lead in that, you know, all of these things. Like, again, we have to understand that they're not doing as well. And niggas are operating from a very scarce, uh, 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 scarcity mindset. Like it's real, like it literally is walk. It's like the old, and especially the older the women get, the older the women get, the less of us it is, you know, 40 of them are going in circle for maybe three, four, three, four dudes. At, at best and i'm probably being nice saying that three or four dudes you know what i'm saying because after a while the best dudes get married and you left with what you left with and look you know i'm not saying that you should settle at all i'm saying do whatever is in your best interest as well you know this is not necessarily a black female channel obviously but i would suggest that every woman operate in her own best interest and that whatever that is that you do it immediately because it's your right and it's your obligation to operate in your own best interest. And if niggas ain't here, niggas here ain't worth shit, then you need to find another thing. The, the thing is, though, that I always find to be, you know, I mean, I guess sad on some level is that the reputation of black women globally isn't always the best. So you really, you really, you know, stand to kind of lose going outside. Because I mean, like, again, it's not like people are marrying you all. You know what I'm saying? It's not like people are marrying you all, you know what I mean? But I mean, at the end of the day, operating your own best interests as well. You know what I mean? And if that's not a black man, if that's a white man, if that's a Chinese man, if that's Mexican man, if that's Arab man, whatever it is, you get that. If that's in your best interest, you do that. You know what I'm saying? But bros, back to back to y'all, all of the, the black men who are who are, you know what I'm saying, operating as interference and creating these circular arguments about you ain't got no game to get a woman here it's just like man y'all are bogus man y'all are bogus you know what i'm saying y'all are really really bogus you know what i'm saying really really bogus you know what i mean and and you know the 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 betrayal and the the the, the treachery it it won't be rewarded trust it will not be rewarded you know what i mean what's gonna eventually happen is what typically happens with guys who are online and vehemently against something that's ultimately right you're gonna find yourself on the wrong end of history you know you're gonna find yourself on the wrong end of history man and you know i mean like i, I mean I, I don't have no words for you you know after y'all are on the wrong end of history i'm not i don't want nothing to do with you I don't want nothing to do with that because that nonsense over there is just ridiculous. It, it gets to a point where it's getting so ridiculous that they're just running out of stuff to say. And they're talking to a, a 23-year-old at that who's beat him. He's beat y'all, essentially. He's won. You know what I'm saying? He's won. He should be putting his hands up saying, you know, and the winner is and still. Like, you know what I mean? He's been whooping y'all ass for like a good month now. You know? He's been whooping on y'all ass for a good month now. You know? And it continues to whoop on your ass, you know, week after week. You know what I'm saying? You know, that smoke show should have been full of guys who had who had all the smoke for them. But it wasn't. You know. I mean, I don't I don't know. Maybe, maybe they'll show up next time. You know what I'm saying? But that'll be my time, man. You know what I'm saying? Again, I appreciate all the love. You know what I'm saying? Hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure, you know what I'm saying, you leave a comment. Let me know what you want to hear from uh us over here um but this is mike perkins and i am out